Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today we are looking at Flash and particularly um, in regards to um, older cameras from the 1950s and cameras that don't feature hot shoes. Hot shoe, for those who don't know, is like on this contacts here. This is a hot shoe on the top. You can see it has electrical contacts here. Um, the central one is the actual triggering one. These ones are usually for things like um, the ready light, etc. On an electronic rash to come on. These, these are not used with bulbs. But what we're interested in today is on these older cameras. And I have some examples here. This is a Pax M2. As you can see, this has what's called a cold shoe. A cold shoe looks like a hot shoe, but it doesn't have any electrical contacts. So that's a cold shoe. That is a cold shoe. This is another cold shoe. And by now you should be able to say, yep, there's another cold shoe. So this is a, a Zeiss Icon camera. There's various different brands here. This is an Ambi Select from Agfa. This is a, another Agfa. This is a Super Select that was featured before. Again, cold shoe. Like I say, the little packs. So we're going to talk today about PC connections. And that is not PC in the terms of computers. It's PC in the terms of Pronto Compor. Um, it's an amalgamation of two companies. Large stakeholder in both companies was our good old friends at Zeiss. So they came up with this standard connection. And it can be in different places on different cameras. On this one... You'll see that the PC connection, if this thing will focus, is down here. This is what it looks like. I don't know if it'll go in any closer than that. This is a PC connection on the bottom. And normally accompanying a PC connection somewhere, there will be a switch to select between bulbs and flash. And there it is on this camera. So you have F, which is for bulbs. And you have X, which is for electronic flash. Bulbs went out of usage just oh, a long, long time ago. I've been doing photography for 40 years, and the only bulbs I ever used were these ones, which are Instamatic bulbs. These go on top of 126 cameras like Kodak Instamatics. And these are sort of museum pieces. I don't even think these ones work anymore. But with a bulb, it's a one-shot thing. Once the bulb has been fired, it... Uh, you have to turn to another one. On those cameras, when you advance the film, it automatically revolves. So you get four shots, and then this is just rubbish then. This is an American brand. American Kana Flash Cube. That's what they were called for Instamatic cameras. You may have seen them in the old movies. They've all got these big flash guns with the bulbs in them, and every time there's usually a button that you can eject the bulb out when it's been fired, because it's going to be hot. And... Uh, you can put a new one in for the next shot. This basically contains, I think it's um, something like magnesium or something in there that burns very, very brightly. Different duration of flash on that. So you've seen on this one the connections on the actual lens itself. But on other camera bodies, it could be all over the place. This is the, um, the Super Select, and you can see that it's down here. This is where you connect your flash gun to. This is the Ambi Select, and you can see here it's up on the top. And this one is the Zeiss Icon, and they rather cleverly hide it away underneath this flap. So there's the flash connection underneath there. But they will all have a switch where you can select whether it's, uh, there we go, we have X and M on the bottom, and V is the self timer on these kind of cameras. So when you see V, that's the self timer, X is for electronic, and M is for flash bulbs. I don't imagine many people are going to be using flash bulbs. I don't even think you can get ones that actually work nowadays. Even on a fairly modern camera, although this is still 40 years old, even on DSLRs, you will find they have them as well. Not mounted on the lens because the shutter is actually in the camera body itself and the lens is interchangeable. However, on bigger, larger format cameras like, uh, well, real large format cameras, 
whatever lens is on the end of bellows or things like the Hasselblad which have the leaf shutter in the lens you find that the connection is actually on the lens but that's how it looks so it hasn't changed that's thanks to our friends at Zeiss who introduced this kind of system and the two companies sort of came together Pontor Compul uh, so that's what the PC stands for now to connect to that you're going to need a cable you can't use a flash gun that's only got a hot shoe connection so flash guns come in different sizes this is a very small this is a Minolta Hocus down here uh, Electro Flash P and you can see that this has got a hot shoe on it which is this connection then in between here and here but it has no connection for a cable by the way flash guns are very prone to having the batteries left in them so if you see them at boot sales or charity shops etc always open up the battery compartment he says if you can remember how to do it that way and have a look and check for it might still have the batteries in it but check for corrosion on the battery terminals because it probably will not work you might be able to clean it up with some vinegar a lot of camera manufacturers started making dedicated flash guns this is a, a flash gun 300 tl i believe yeah canon 300 tl this is dedicated to the canon t90 you can see it has extra pins on it rather than just the one central pin and that's things to link in with how the flash works and pass information backwards and forwards and that will only really work well on the t90 but again there's no there's no socket on these i don't think for plugging in a lead this small small flash gun the battery can not just fell off this small flash gun you can see on the front there's no sensor so on this one you have to work out something called the guide number and the guide number is a given number for power in the flash gun and most of these ones will have a table on them and it will show you the guide number in meters and the guide number in feet so 400 ASA film the guide number is 90 so at 10 feet for example you'd use f9 f8 probably so you have to do a bit of maths with that this one however has a sensor on the front it has two settings it has the red setting has the yellow setting and it has no setting which is full power and on the back it has a little calculator so you put in your uh, ISO or your speed so 400 sorry about that so you put in 400 and then you decide whether you want to use the red the yellow or the full power so if I put it in the red sector it's telling me depending on the lens that I've got a wide a normal or a telephoto so on a normal lens with 400 ISO film on the red sensor I need to be shooting at f8 and the distance then would be in feet six and a half feet is that right no six and a half meters sorry it's all in meters on this one but with a normal lens it's seven and a half and with a telephoto lens nine meters if I shoot it on the yellow setting Is the middle one it then shows me f16 and that's going to be with a normal lens 3.7 once you've got that figure you can obviously play around with it etc and you could change the aperture different kinds of shutters have different what they call synchronization speeds these cameras are all leaf shuttered cameras leaf shuttered cameras tend to sync with electronic flash at any shutter speed with bulbs i've never actually shot with bulbs but i'm pretty sure bulbs has to be a bit slower than any speed i'm sure it has to be um, a slower speed but i'm not quite too sure on that um, but for electronic flash leaf shutters will synchronize at any any of the shutter speeds on these sort of cameras which have a focal plane shutter that is one that runs across the back like we've seen before on many of these cameras that's a focal plane shutter it's at the back this is the actual shutter here 
with these kind of shutters they always have a, a top speed that they will flash sync at and it's normally a 60th maybe a, a 90th 125th on some of the pro level cameras it goes up to about 250 maybe 300 and with certain flashes they can go up to sort of 2000 to the second but that's quite specialist and uh, not really the sort of thing that we're going to be looking at today to use these cameras you need a flash gun like this is a Sunpack flash gun used to be a really big name in flash gun Sunpack but as you can see it has a lead and this is the the end of the lead here I'm always telling people don't ever put the flash on the hot shoe to take pictures because it gives horribly harsh light and you can see the flash gun just plugs into there like so the advantage of these which are called hammerhead shot uh, hammerhead sharks hammerhead flash guns is you can hold them off the camera this one includes a, uh, a bracket so you can uh, you can mount the bracket onto here so then you can put the camera on the bracket and you can add a grip to it this head also rotates and it also goes up and down so you can bounce the flash off walls and ceilings etc very popular flash gun than the Metz ones so I think this one's actually got some batteries in it so this one's very simple I'll up at the back indicator to show you that the flash is ready and uh, there's usually a function on a lot of these ones with sensors you can see this, this flash gun has got a sensor in it so there's usually a light that will come on with a green that shows you that the exposure is going to be okay and there's usually a test fire button as well this one also has a calculator on the top so exactly the same thing you put in your speed of the film and then this has different settings it goes from manual which is full power around this side down to lesser and lesser powers down here so you would set your film speed so we're going to say we're going to be shooting at 100 and then you would choose your power setting so we've got it on a fairly low power setting it's on the lowest power setting and then it will give us an aperture for the distance so in this case we're talking about say 10 meters we're looking at f4 so we set our aperture to f4 on the camera and you can see this one's charged up there's a test flash like that and you can see the exposure was okay because the light came on and if i connect that to our camera and the one i think she was asking about was similar to this one so again this lead plugs into here you can wind on the camera set the shutter speed it's 125th set the aperture to f4 do your focusing this is a, a rangefinder camera i believe yep and then when you press the button make sure it's on x whatever the setting for that is on this camera it's on the top as you can see in each camera they're in different places but the the functionality is the same that's my wallace heatman thing just come apart on there you can see that the uh, the functions are the same this one has v for self timer x electronic and m for bulbs so we're on the X setting, so if I press the shutter, the flash should fire. There you go. So that's how you use electronic flash with these cameras. You need a flash gun that's got a connection, a PC connection. Just to show you again. So leaf shutters, it will sink at any flash speed. So even if I take it down to a second, that's a 300th, that's a second. And of course, it's going to show me up by being sticky. The camera needs exercising. But you get the general idea. So when you haven't got a hot shoe, you're going to have to use a flash gun that's got a connection for a lead. This one's got a specialist lead on the side. Studio flashes also work this way. The big studio units are also connected via these. Nowadays, most of them are controlled wirelessly because people don't like that and leads everywhere they trip hazards. But yeah, this one has a connection on the side. 
you can get these cables in all kinds of different lengths there probably is a restriction on the maximum length that it can be another point to bear in mind is trigger voltage a lot of these old film flash guns have very high trigger voltages if you try and use these with a digital camera even though the digital camera will probably have the same connection on it um, it can fry the electrics in it so you need to be very careful i tend to say use old film flashes on old film cameras and on digital cameras use newer flashes and check on the internet to make sure that the flash gun is suitable for use on that camera um, because be warned these old flash guns particularly these Metz ones they can fry the electrics in modern digital cameras um, so use a modern I tend to use modern dedicated flashes that are specific to that camera for example with my Nikons and my Canon DSLRs because I don't want to fry the camera because it's going to be basically useless afterwards so old film flashes old film cameras not a worry even with this it's not really a problem it's only with the digital cameras where there's so much electronics but it's just worth checking to see what the voltage is I have got a video where I got a Vivitar 283 and that's quite a common and very popular flash gun and there's two versions of it one of them is a high voltage version which will um, wreck a modern camera and the other one is a lower voltage version which is fine to use on everything you can use the lower voltage guns with uh, the old cameras they're not going to do any harm to it if they can take the high voltage they can certainly take the low voltage thank you very much that's the video for today hope you enjoyed don't forget to comment questions queries etc down below add things that i've missed because i probably missed something even this little tuxie which is a minute little camera it has a connection on it a little focus on it where is it up there it's got a flash connection as well and it's probably got a selector switch somewhere god knows where not a camera overused because you just don't really get the film for it now. I think it's 16 mil, so yeah, I'm not really sure. But yeah, even this little camera's got a, a PC connection for flash on it. So you could use a little camera with a huge flash gun. All right, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, share, subscribe, and all that usual YouTube goodness. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.